Hello and welcome to Ask the TA, a periodic segment on HCAT where viewers can send questions for the town administrator and other town representatives to answer for the benefit of all Halston stakeholders. Today I'll be answering the following questions. What important business is in front of the town on May 13th at annual town meeting? And how is the town administrator's office working to ensure all stakeholders feel that this important annual legislative process is as approachable and accessible as possible? To answer these questions, I'll review the communications and logistical improvements that the town has been working on and review the content of the warrant itself, leveraging one of the most powerful communication tools in town, Holliston Hub HCAT. I'll start first with our communication methods. Here on the screen what you see is a postcard that we introduced in October of 2023 for the fall town meeting. Um, this is now in May of 2024. Uh, also presenting materials in both Spanish and Portuguese, uh, which leads you to a QR code to the website where the information is also translatable. Um, within the QR code, you can go to the website, which has the version that can be translated into 132 languages. Uh, it brings you to the warrant and supplemental materials, uh, which was posted on April 26th. Additionally, the, the combined version, including the Finance Committee recommendations and other supplemental materials, has been posted on Friday, May 3rd. So with this uh, change to our communication strategy within the last year, um, information related to town meetings are sent out through snail mail, email, social media, uh, the website, as, including Holliston Reporter, uh, who has partnered as well with Holliston Hub HCAT. Uh, so a number of different new communication methods where we're trying to reach everybody in town. Um, and so if there's anybody who has additional suggestions, certainly feel free to reach out. But uh, we feel that this has really improved uh, making sure that everybody, all stakeholders in town, are aware of this very important legislative process. So with that, I'm going to get into the actual um, items on the warrant. Uh, and I'll wrap up as well at the end uh, with some of the communication methods and things to come for people to keep an eye out for. Uh, so within, uh, as well as trying to bring more people in and, and make sure that everybody feels knowledgeable and that town meeting is accessible, one of the other things that we've done to try to make it more efficient in terms of uh, a significant time commitment for our residents is to move quickly through uh, standard business. So the consent agenda was introduced during COVID um, to move along the warrant for some of the recurring business that is ultimately not in need of debate uh, for the moderator to oversee. So the moderator is able to introduce a number of articles at the beginning of town meeting to move them along in one fell swoop. Uh, and for this May 2024 annual town meeting, we're looking at uh, at least uh, over 10 articles uh, that can be done quickly uh, to get those out of the way. Um, and then additionally, what we always start with is reports of the Select Board and the Finance Committee to summarize what's on the warrant. So generally speaking, 30 minutes after the start time of 7 p.m., uh, we'll get into the actual business. And uh, if you are able to get there by 7.30, you'll still be there for all the business. If you're able to get there by 7, you'll catch the introductions from both the Select Board and Finance Committee, slightly different perspectives on the warrant. Um, from different uh, angles to, to view for, uh, for the stakeholders. Um, next on, after those, those um, sort of regular business items, it gets into financial business. So the revolving funds are funds that are supported through revenue of uh, each individual item. For example, Pinecrest revolving uh, the golf course supports the expenditure of the golf course through a revolving fund. The revenues support the expenditures. And so there's a number of different uh, items that, follow, that fall under revolving fund article uh, that sets the spending limit by town meeting, the legislative body. And then additionally, Article 12 uh, is specifically for two major capital projects at Pinecrest for a cart port uh, to store the, um, the golf carts, uh, which will in the future uh, be part of potentially uh, solar expansion uh, onto Pinecrest, as well as a roof replacement, which is also a precursor to future solar installments. Other routine business between Articles 13, 14, 15, and 16 are not able to be put into the consent agenda because of the financial components, but they are very much considered routine business uh, that we do every year um, and all have uh, financial recommendations in favor uh, from the Finance Committee. Um, Article 17 is really the, the, the change for May 2024 as compared to previous years. So we have an operating budget, which I'll get to in a moment. Um, and so within all of those discussions of where the school committee's budget is, 
um, compared to what is what could be balanced within the FY25 operating budget. Uh, there is a one-time issue related to how expenditure, how revenues, excuse me, for uh, special education, specifically transportation, tuition, uh, is paid for. And so one of the items to make sure that the school committee uh, and school administration has the resources it needs for FY25 uh, was a discussion between the school committee, select board, and finance committee on one-time uh, costs being allocated uh, for special education in FY25, $750,000 used from the General Stabilization Fund to ensure that the schools have what they need for the coming fiscal year. Uh, this also has a favorable recommendation from both the select board and the finance committee. Moving into the budget itself, this is Article 20, and actually well, I'll point out that between Article 17 and 20, there are two articles that will be indefinitely postponed for the fall, which is to put money into the General Stabilization Fund uh, and Programmatic Stabilization Fund. Those will wait until October when we have our free cash certification from the Division of Local Services from MassDOR. So within the budget itself, which funds uh, sort of all of the annual activities the, of how the town runs, this is Article 20. Uh, you will see a presentation when you go to the, the warrant and the finance, finance committee recommendations that shows four levels of the budget. Level one is the departmental request. This is unbalanced. It's simply departments explaining what they need to operate um, on a level service basis, meaning to provide the level of service that, that is expected from prior year. Uh, level two is a town administrator recommended budget that balances both the revenues and the, the request for expenditure. Level three is the select board's uh, recommendation based off of that town administrator recommendation. And level four is the finance committee recommendation, which was uh, the most recent uh, recommendation with all of the, the newest financial information, including changes to state aid, uh, which will become uh, the motion that uh, town meeting acts on. Um, a couple highlights within the budget that I'll point out here, but obviously I'd recommend that everybody go uh, review the information on the website. When you click on that QR code, when you follow that QR code on the postcard, or you go through any of the materials to get to the, to the town meeting warrant, uh, you will also see a link to get to all of this budget information. You can drill as far down as you'd like to into the details. Uh, a couple highlights would be that the five-year strategic plan that was recently um, completed by the Envisioning Future Holliston Committee involves FY25 through 29. So the FY25 budget contains quite a few items uh, that illustrate those strategic priorities. Additionally, one of those strategic priorities, but also something that was in, in effect or being worked on prior to the strategic planning process was improvements to the ambulance service where we are looking to achieve an advanced life support ALS license for our ambulance service uh, from the state or OEMS. Uh, so you'll see a significant increase in the ambulance budget which is entirely lined up with our expectation that within the coming fiscal year, July 1st, 24 to June 30, 2025, the town will be striving to achieve that ALS license. Finally, one item I'll point out here is for youth and family services. Uh, the town has received, as although the communities in the Commonwealth that signed on to a class action lawsuit, a settlement for opioid, the impacts of the opioid crisis from uh, the pharmaceutical companies. The town is allocating funds at the May town meeting for numerous purposes. One is to support the Youth and Family Services budget for a position that was created during COVID um, and is being rolled into the budget for FY25. Another one is an article I'll talk about in a moment. So the Opioid Settlement Stabilization Fund supports that article. Articles 21 and 22 are to put money into the Capital Expenditure Fund and then use the Capital Expenditure Fund uh, for purposes uh, mentioned here, facilities improvements, fire ambulance equipment, DPW equipment, and school technology for a total uh, investment into the fund of 1.7 and a use of the fund of just over a million for a net increase to the fund balance of just over $600,000. The town utilized the capital expenditure fund with $7 million last year to reduce the cost of borrowing and so we are trying to build that fund back up. Uh, as I mentioned, the, uh, the opioid settlement stabilization fund. Uh, another specific request that was made was from HDAC, the Holliston Drug and Alcohol Awareness Coalition. Uh, this is a group that works day to day with Zoe Moreau of the Drug Free Communities Grant, uh, as well as Jackie Weiner of Youth and Family Services. And so these are all allowable uses under the settlement, which is all dictated by that, uh, that national settlement overseen by the Attorney General's Office in the, in the Commonwealth. And so the allowable uses that uh, HDAC has requested for this Maytown meeting to consider 
is support of people in, in treatment and recovery, connections to care, harm reductions, post-intervention programs, uh, those that have gone through the, the criminal justice system and are, are looking to rehabilitate, so post-intervention programs, support for pregnant and parenting women, and prevention of opioid misuse, which is, includes education. Um, so this will be the sort of first major foray into using these dollars for the betterment of the town of Holliston uh, in addressing the opioid crisis, this with um, the position in youth and family services in the operating budget. Uh, and then two articles related to the water division. This is also uh, the water division is a major component of the strategic priority. It's a, it's something that has come out uh, as a as a, uh, a universal um, support throughout the town for making sure that we have uh, the best quality of water that we possibly can. So we have two items here both of which are simply reallocating funds within the enterprise fund. The water division pays uh, through its revenues for its expenditures. The first is for the lead and copper rule compliance, so uh, some regulatory changes for MassDEP, where the town needs to be prepared to comply. Um, and then two is to uh, repurpose some funds that are available in previous uh, projects for water treatment plant improvements, including well number four and Dopping Brook. People will remember that well number five is our, our new water treatment plant, um, but we have existing water treatment plants as well that need you know, consistent improvements over time. Uh, and so this allows the water division to continue to invest in those for the betterment uh, of the community. Uh, article 26 is related to the Town Manager Act. It's, a, it's an article that would change a form of governance between the select board and the town administrator in terms of day-to-day -day operations. Uh, I reference here a separate uh, Holliston Hub HCAP piece uh, on the Just Thinking program of Mary Greendale, where she interviewed uh, the chair of the select board, John Cronin. So I won't get into that here, but I'd recommend if you're interested in that uh, to find Mary Greendale's piece on Holliston Hub. Uh, and then a few uh, final articles here before I wrap up. Uh, regula regulation of industrial vehicles is related to an ongoing discussion the select board's had on ensuring that industrial vehicles, those two and a half tons or greater, um, are, are not going cutting down side streets. Um, the town has engaged Mass DOT. There's a number of things that have been put in place for that. Ultimately, the Mass DOT approved heavy commercial vehicle exclusion comes with a, um, a maximum $55 ticket. So from an enforcement perspective, which appears to be the, the uh, interest of town meeting and, and others of how we would like to address this, um, it has been found that if, if we're able to increase that fine, we would require a bylaw which has been put forward that would allow for a citation up to $300 um, to, to improve the enforcement of, uh, of the heavy commercial vehicle exclusion on some of the side streets, um, maintaining uh, as we have to with DOT that there are alternate routes for trucks to be on, namely state number routes, um, and that you know to avoid trucks using side streets, neighborhoods to avoid traffic, uh, we want them to stay on those those roads that are meant for truck traffic. The library grant match is an article that was put forward by the library trustees for a grant program that is not always or not readily available on an annual basis. It's come back since COVID. Um, it, it has a deadline of May 30th, so the trustees are asking for $150,000 for their application. If the application were not accepted by the state, the money would come back to the town. If it were accepted, this would then go towards uh, a feasibility study that the state would match those funds for. If the feasibility study were then to lead to a capital project, town meeting in a future town meeting would then vote on that. Um, the library trustees will be providing supplemental information at town meeting for that particular article. And then the final three articles, the Community Preservation Committee, uh, which accesses the Community Preservation Fund, which is a, uh, a, sur um, a surcharge, excuse me, on your tax bill uh, for specific purposes. Uh, has provided four projects, um, restrooms at the Holliston Historical Society, specifically ADA compliant restrooms, um, a design of uh, a parks project on the old flag school site, uh, specifically to design basketball courts, uh, a pavilion at the community farm, and then trail markers at Miller Hill. A road acceptance for Rebecca Lane is uh, put forward where uh, they have reached the punch list and that, that road would be accepted um, for all normal municipal purposes. Uh, there is a small punch list for the developer to finish up which is covered by a bond. And finally, the water tower lease. We have numerous water towers throughout town. Cell companies put 
uh, towers on top, and then they pay the town a lease payment to do that. We split that revenue between the general fund, the water enterprise fund, and the capital expenditure fund. And so anytime a lease agreement is over a certain number of years, in this case generally over three years, uh, town meeting has to approve the ability of us to negotiate that agreement. Uh, the longer the agreement, generally speaking, the better financial terms we can get for the town, which is why we're asking town meeting for the authorization to extend that lease. Uh, and so just in conclusion, what I'll summarize again is that uh, we, have, we have tried to really increase our communications for this town meeting um, as we have for, for the, the past few. Um, one of the things that has been loud and clear from our residents is that uh, there is a, a strong like for uh, preferred senior parking at, at uh, Holliston High School. Um, so we will continue to implement that. Uh, the, um, and we also have been providing childcare through uh, a third party, which has been a wonderful um, support for those uh, parents with, with uh, young children who would like to come and, and be part of town meeting, but ultimately need to address uh, those needs to be able to make it. So uh, we will continue those. We will continue to improve the communication. Um, and for anybody with questions on um, the, the warrant itself, please reach out to my office. You can also reach out to the town clerk, Liz Greendale. Um, and we will uh, continue to proceed to May 13th. So with that, thank you very much for uh, watching Ask the TA on Holliston Hub HCAT. I hope you found this review of the May 2024 annual town meeting warrant helpful. And if you have ways that you'd like to see the town continue to improve communications related to town meeting or other town activities, please, please reach out uh, at the email address on the screen below. Thank you for watching.